and good to go. Oh, for fuck's sake. All right, okay, so I'll get them all. I'm like, I'm not going to get there that one over me. You fucking idiot. There we go, brother. <laughs> nah, it's not going to work. No, I'm going to have to do it the other way. You have to do it like this. He's got a big head. <laughs> hey, don't talk to me about domes. <laughs> yeah. True. This cue ball is on top of me shoulders. There we go. I hope he appreciates it. It's only it's all for him. <laughs> it, really, it really is. It's all for you. <laughs> Assuming he sees this bit. Yeah. I don't know. Three, two, one. Good morning and welcome to the last episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. Now, I can hear the gasps and cries, but worry not. It is only the last episode this year and subsequently season one of the, the podcast. Um, a fairly recent decision it that that's really what we was, were going to yeah. do. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, we are obviously we're going to be back for what will now be season two in, in the new year. Um, but uh, for the last time this year... I'm your host, Callum, and as always, thank goodness, is uh, is Scott Hello, here mate. with me. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm a little bit rough this morning, as yep. <laughs> no doubt uh, you can all hear. Birthday uh, celebration. Yeah, so birthday celebration. Many happy returns. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was uh, a good one, was it? It was, yeah. Yeah, it was um, full of drink um, and full of Tiger King season two. Excellent. Not a bad uh, Absolutely combo. Absolutely batshit crazy. <laughs> With what I believe is a, what, a homemade drinking game oh, yeah. that you incorporated. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 yeah we had um, every time there was a tiger, you drink. <laughs> every time someone was shirtless, you drink. Every time you saw someone with um, not a full set of teeth, you drink. <laughs> yeah. And every time someone says, that bitch, Carol Baskin, you, <laughs> you drink. drink. <laughs> so, you, so you were smashed by we, the second episode. We was, then. Yeah, mate. We was done for by the second episode. And like, we had to see the season out. <laughs> How many episodes are there? Five. Oh, five. Yeah, oh, so, right, okay. so we barely made it halfway Half through the yeah. entire thing. Yeah, sounds about right. And we were, sh- we were, we were done, mate. Yeah, Pops we were shit faced. Excellent. <laughs> Glad to hear it. That's, and that's how it should be. Very much recommend it. <laughs> very much. Yeah, well, I say the wife and I got uh, got as far as the second episode, but uh, yeah, it wasn't as exciting as drinking games. We just fell asleep. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No reflection on the show. The show was um, just as nuts as you'd expect it to life, be following on from. of the mid-30s, eh? Oh, absolutely, mate. Yeah, you know it. Dear <laughs> Lord, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're living it out. Living yeah. the dream. Living the dream. As it were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we jump into the episode, um, as always, we have our you know obligatory uh, shout outs to uh, to go through. Um, firstly, our beloved patrons, Justin and James. Beloved indeed. Absolutely. Thank you very um, much, guys. Thank you, as always, for the continued support. It is uh, much appreciated. Um, and remember, fellow Ramblers, you too can be a part of this exclusive supporters club <laughs> by simply going to <laughs> patreon.com forward slash cryptid ramblers podcast it's um it is as easy as that it really is um there you will find two reasonably priced tiers if i do say so <laughs> myself reasonably priced <laughs> reasonably priced tiers. Oh, yes, yes. um you know like top gear had the a reasonably, reasonably priced price car yeah we've got gotcha. the reasonably priced uh tiers um priced at four and six pounds um plus vat plus vat plus vat um if you're in the uh lower of the the two tiers you'll get um a shout out as you've as you've heard at the uh, the start and end of, of every episode, plus early access to the bi weekly episodes. Um, however, if you sign up to the uh, the higher tier, you will get all of that plus access to watch the video recording of this uh, episode. So you'll mm. get to hear us and see these, these beautiful mugs. Beautiful mugs, absolutely. <laughs> um, so I'm sure that there are plenty of reasons already for you to uh, yeah. come and support your favourite podcast. So. Uh, Please, uh, please come and do so. Indeed. <laughs> um, now, of course, we're coming to you again from the uh, the home of, of the podcast, our new purpose-built studio here at Hellfire Studios. It's based in South End Essex, which is roughly 45 minutes from uh, London. It is the first podcast, film and photography studio here in Essex. 
Hellfire Studio offers full content creation, so visit hellfirecreative.com for more info. Um, now, just for being a listener um, of your favourite podcast, you too can benefit from our sponsorship by receiving a 20% discount. All you have to do is go to hellfirestudio.uk and use the code CRYPTID at the checkout. Um, now, by way of an update, we are getting ever closer to having our um, new merch store ready uh, to launch. Um, the designs are ready to go um, over to the our new sort of partner, a new company. And uh, we'll be starting off with uh, the the sort of the revamped uh, merch, which will be season one merch. Yeah. So we'll be revamping the uh, the current um, designs that are being beautifully modelled by Scott and I for the benefit of, uh, of Justin. Um, but we've also got around three or four um, new designs yeah. um, at the moment, which we've obviously kept close to our chest. We've not sort of dropped any teasers sort of well, just no, I yet. Think, but I think I, we should. I, we probably should. At, I think uh, we should drop a little teaser. I think we might, um, yeah, I think we might, I think we might save it maybe for once the episode's out, drop a few little teaser <laughs> images or or phrases that yeah. might be familiar to mm -hmm. some of the um, well, well keen... mostly the phrases that have made us lose our shit. Yeah, and if and if that means anything to anyone, then you probably know what's coming. <laughs> so uh, we uh, we apologise in advance, but, all, but also you're we, welcome. Yeah, yeah, we apologise in advance. <laughs> no, they are good. They're really good uh, designs. Have certainly. Um, yeah, certainly kept us uh, laughing, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they're really good. And obviously, then the company that we're going to be working with, um, you know, excellent quality, really great guys over there. And what's better still is that they uh, they're also local to us, mm. so um, yeah, supporting local, which is uh, obviously what we want to do as well. Yeah. Um, so right, uh, without further ado, let's jump into the episode. Indeed. Um, as anyone should hopefully remember last time, because we again remembered to mention it, <laughs> yes, um, yeah. we will be discussing um, the Christmas cryptid that is Krampus. Yeah, Krampus. Krampus. Um, as uh, of course there'll be uh, you know a few cameos from you know sort of a few others from around you know Europe and you know other other parts of the world. Um, and I suppose as a, as a little surprise, I thought we'd. Uh, would go educational on yeah. uh, your asses, and uh, <laughs> well, we're going high brow, are we? Is it a bit, bit high brow? <laughs> yeah, so I thought we'd sign off with a bit of uh, education for you and uh, dive into the, the the big guy himself and and sort of and his origins. Well, Satan, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> oh, also, Santa, and also Santa, you mean, sorry. Santa. Yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one of the, well, one of the two, as some may believe. But yeah. mm -hmm. uh, we can come on to that. Uh, a little Santa later on is the devil is the devil I'm kind <laughs> Santa's bad I'm kind um, so uh, I guess we'll jump uh, Let's go straight for into it, it shall yeah. we so what, yeah what did you find out about uh, Krampus so I'm sure it's one that, that probably everyone knows because if, if they've not seen you know the images then they've certainly seen you know the mm. the, the crappy films or the yeah because it's become quite um, uh, mainstream a lot of quite culture mainstream in, there's a lot of things have yeah, ten years, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, he's become a, a horror, you know, sort of icon. Mm. Um, certainly in you know good old Hollywood, <coughs> with um, the release of actually a couple of um, a couple of films. Um, one not too long ago, in the last sort of three or four years, mm. um, which I think is actually on Amazon now. If people, anyone wants to watch it, um, but there's an anime. Uh, 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 put my teeth in. Did you really? Did you really? Oh, 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 oh. An animated show on Netflix, um, called something like Love and something love and robots or yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, i can't remember the name of it yeah i, should, I, know I should remember that yeah it's got like short episode sort of things like it's little animations shorts. And, yeah. and whatnot yeah, I, think, yeah, yeah. I think the shortest one i think it's literally about five or six minutes and then some go up to about 20 minutes but they're all little shorts all different styles and different sort of you know iterations it's, it's actually really good um, but one of them is about um Krampus. All oh, right, and it's it's really creepy. Um, we'll maybe share the link yeah, yeah, on the yeah, uh, cool. on the socials. I'll, I'll um, check that out as well. It's, actually, yeah, it's, it's a good one. It's uh, a friend of mine who uh, I watched it with said that it would be a good one to sit the kids down in front of to uh, <laughs> basically scare them out of being naughty, warn them. <laughs> this was before we saw it, and then I watched it. And I thought, yeah, that'll that'll scare the life out of them. So yeah, <laughs> it could be a, a tool for that as well. But um, but no, for those that uh, that don't know, um, I suppose the Krampus. Uh, is a horned human-like figure um, coming out of sort of Central and Eastern European folklore, um, who, of course, during Christmas um, 
scares children who have misbehaved. Mm. So um, he's probably busier than the big guy, I, I imagine. <laughs> especially <laughs> these days. Around, yeah, especially at the moment. Yeah, yeah flea neck. Um, yeah. Um, it's believed that he actually assists uh, Santa. Uh, the pair will visit children uh, initially on the night of the 5th of December. Um, Santa would reward the well-behaved children with modest gifts like dried fruits, nuts and chocolate, um, whilst the badly behaved kids would be punished by um, the Krampus using birch rods. Um, which yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. Uh, which again, for those that don't know, are basically uh, canes made up of um, tightly bound uh, twigs, mm. uh, basically, and yeah. they'll they'll get a hiding <laughs> basically from uh, the uh, from the Krampus. Um, now, the the origins, from what I could find, are mostly unclear in terms of where this sort of story came from. But it's believed to stem from. Of course, the, the pre-Christian era, um, before they got their dirty little mitts on it. Yeah. Um, in uh, traditional parades and events like the Krampushof, young men would dress up as the Krampus and attempt to scare the audience. Um, these events would happen annually, um, with Krampus appearing on greetings greetings cards called the Krampus Karten. Awesome. Yeah, and that, that, that was kind of the, the one yeah, of the first like back sort of traditions. Anyway. I yeah, like that I idea, like that, yeah. like dressing up and scaring the shit out of the, the, oh, the, that would, the kids yeah. in the town. That's right up my street. Yeah, I thought that would tickle, you, <laughs> tickle your interest a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Dragging them by their feet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. dragging them out of bed. With, yeah. uh, Whilst their parents are in hysterics watching their children yeah, exactly. yeah, scream no. for their lives. Well, it's interesting because this is, this is the, the sort of the, one of the more traditional parades in terms of like how it first kind of started, and as you can guess by some of the names, and you know, be certainly either German or Germanic speaking yeah, yeah. Um, countries because uh, we're talking about like pre Christian era, so it was quite some time ago. Um, but what I quite like is what I saw the other day um, is actually modern modern America is yeah. actually bringing the parade back. I think I saw a video only a couple of days ago, um, conveniently enough, um, on Facebook, which is I think from Minnesota, yeah, well, it would have been um, on uh, Massachusetts, it, one of the two. Is it the fifth? The fifth is it stemmed from Krampus that. Nut, yeah. isn't it? Krampus Nut, the yeah. night of Krampus. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and that's when they they do it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, um, interestingly, um, Santa became popular only in, in Germany around the 11th century, um, and the Krampus uh, figure, as we sort of now know, was around the 15th. Um, so, again, like what most things, the Christians got their hands on. It started off quite pure and quite genuine mm. with the the, the Santa uh, story, which is again around the you know the eleventh century, and then they they got their mitts on it, and then eventually in the fifteenth they had to create, you know, much like God that Satan was created with yeah. good, with good there must be evil, and this is another example of that. So you know five four, you know four or five centuries later, um, the Krampus was was then created as the kind of evil against the good of you oh, know santa okay. so, i think yeah it's a kind of because you can't just be pure and good and you know there has to be an evil to there's got to be a dichotomy sort of yeah. thing of there's got to be an opposite <clears throat> and to each yeah exactly each yeah. one yeah exactly so, and obviously because if it was like a christian version then there had to be something that was completely separate from christianity Yes, and that was yeah. evil to scare them into yeah so it couldn't be like basically. you know it couldn't be like the one thing yeah, they exactly, would be yeah. both good and evil. It's like, no, Christianity is just wholly good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, so there, there, there had to be that contrast. There couldn't just be <clears throat> something yeah. good and, and genuine, basically, from what I certainly from what I could sort of determine from from you know the various articles I read. Um I mean you'll probably know this, but um Krampus could well derive from pagan supernatural elements, um, which kind of matches what eventually became the Christian devil. Mm. Um, so they might have had their own Krampus when, obviously, you know, paganism was, you know, the main mm. thing back in the day. And then Christians came along well, and sort was, of thought, you yeah, know, we like that well, idea. Well, there was the, the <laughs> Yule goat and, the, like, the right. you know, Krampus has the goat horns does, and, yeah, and yeah. everything else like that. And so, the hoofed yeah. feet and whatever, yeah. What's, what I found really interesting was that that image mm. of um, a goat humanoid mm. creature yeah. is is quite popular in the, the in the northern hemisphere. Um, yeah, and it very much um, along the lines of Pan 
as well. Pan, yeah. Well, like what we've discussed previously, you've got iterations of skinwalkers and wendigos mm. that are all kind of horned like, you know, beasts who, you know, stand upright and, and that kind of thing. Mm. So, again, it's another link, you know, between, you know, various cryptids, which until recently may have sort of gone unnoticed or, or unconnected or just and forgotten it, really or just forgotten and again you look into these things and you think well, actually that, that actually just that sounds That's like very, a very Wendigo similar. or that you know and a lot of it comes from you know similar you know kind of regions um pre-christian eras yeah. as well really yeah yeah no exactly yeah um and uh and it was of course it was the christians who paired krampus with santa previously mm. they were completely separate entities different stories different oh okay different uh kind of intentions with the the story but like i was saying earlier that you know the christians came along and thought yeah we like that but well, we want to scare people into christianity so we'll take him yeah and we'll pair him with you know sort of santa as though there's some kind of well, that was the thing wasn't it with all the like duo. green cards and stuff like that where it had both santa claus or mm. saint nick yeah. which is really what the christians were calling it was wasn't yeah. it? it was saint nick yeah and he was very much dressed like the pope you know, oh, had, yeah, had a scepter, the, had the had the fish out. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah, the, you know, the wizard. Yeah, um, the wizard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. That's, that was the, that was it though. That was like this is the the shining bright white Christian part of it all. Yeah, and then oh, but yeah, by the way, this is the devil. This is what used to be. This about. is what you need. Yeah, yeah. It was like, it, the that devil was, goes around with him, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, definitely. Yeah, snatching your people up. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was actually from Compton as well, by the sounds of it. <laughs> Snatch your ass up, He's in from Lincoln Park. <laughs> yeah. He's climbing in your windows. <laughs> so, oh, I had that one last night as well. Oh, so. I was say, yeah. <laughs> so that's why it's fresh, yeah, in, yeah. fresh in your mind, yeah. Um, For those that know. Exactly. Um, although appearing in many sort of variations, um, most kind of versions of the Krampus share common characteristics mm. those being that you know he's hairy um, either brown or black uh, has cloven hooves and horns of a goat um, he carries chains um, which are meant to symbolize the bond between him and the christian church um mm. which was which is sort of an interesting one They've, they kind of normally want to distance themselves from things like the, the devil but early on he actually had a literally like, a direct link you know, yeah, a, a, a chain, a chain link, yeah, yeah, almost like what, what, like as if it was like a leash of some kind sort. of, yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, that's interesting. Mm, I thought that was quite interesting considering they'd almost want well, to distance themselves from that. But I guess they took right? ownership of it. I mean, I'm, am I right in thinking that, um, they also like in, in various parts of the world where they have like these, um, like festivals of penance and mm. stuff like this, yeah, yeah, they do carry around heavy chains and they hit each right, other, okay. Well, they hit you, they hit themselves, hit themselves right, with okay. it with the chains I don't, as not, well. I don't think that's something that I've seen. But no, then, not but then research go, or anything like that. But after just stuff that I've seen previously, oh, yeah, quite, like, quite possibly. I, you yeah. know, like, uh, like various shows like Dark Tourism and stuff yeah. like this. <laughs> it's the like sort of thing they do. So yeah. like, it won't be overly. Yeah, like, I think, I think it's, to be honest, I think it was, it was fairly prominent in like the South American countries, right? Um, okay. Where you know Christianity might take a, a stronger hold, or it's, mm. it's like a um, either it stayed as it was years ago, yeah, or it's evolved into that, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I remember seeing something yeah. like that. It, it makes sense. It kind of keep. It, it would make sense based on the other things that they do in the festival and, and other things that they do and, and how they describe the Krampus looking as a you know as a characteristic. So mm. yeah, that, that does make sense. Um, Along with along with birch branches to uh, to swat children, he will also carry a box or basket on his back to cart away the evil kids, either for drowning, for eating, or to transport to hell. Wow! <laughs> yeah. Like wow, that went dark. Yeah, that quick. went really dark. <laughs> that took a turn. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, so yeah. he's not just going to eat them; he's going to uh, murder them. Oh no! He'll, yeah, yeah. He's got a he's got a plan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got a plan. <laughs> a not very nice one either. <laughs> um, but um, a little bit of etymology as always, uh, yeah, as yeah, we man. like to. But uh, Krampus is derived from the German word Krampen, meaning claw. Ah, oh, okay, that's yeah, cool. Which kind of makes sense when you look at how it's always it's always depicted and, and always yeah big so yeah claw the claw's gonna the, get the you claw. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the claw the <laughs> claw. So, yeah, I thought that was um, yeah, I thought it was quite cool. And, you, and uh, you'll like this bit as well. That he's um, 
He's also believed to be the son of uh, Hel in Norse mythology. Oh, um, Hel, daughter of Loki. Yeah. Gotcha. It's believed to be the uh, the son oh, of, uh, okay. of her, yeah. That's so, cool. Yeah, which I thought you'd quite like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. I always like me Norse, yeah, um, Norse mythology being chucked in there. Yeah. Um, now, that's kind of... I don't know if you've got anything more that you want to, you know, kind of no, add man, to I'm, that, but that was basi- that. that's basically the kind of... The, the the kind of the origins um of um you know the the sort of the krampus um and what i then because that was really all all kind of there was you know you can go to but they, you know they, north america or you can go to you know mm. germany you know eastern europe and they'll all have a krampus and, it, and like i said they all follow pretty much the same characteristics you know there isn't really an origin but it just started popping up in artwork or on greetings cards or it was stories that people told to keep the kids in check and that kind of thing and that's that's pretty much it um so unless you've got anything you want to no no no, my only comment on it really is again after the stuff that i've looked at Mm. the image of krampus is quite a popular one so yes. it might have various different names mm. and such, like, um, but it's it's the cloven hooves, it's the horns, it's yeah. the 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 devilish sort of appearance, yeah. and it's also the the what it also does mm. is incredibly similar to Krampus, but yeah, it's just there's just like some slight tweaks mm. and changes and everything. That's it, yeah. But for the most part, they all seem to be very much connected on on those things like the aesthetics yes and like the 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 basic fundamentals of that idea yeah so they could show an image you know Mm. to the kids so you know you see that that box on his back he'll carry you away in that (laughs) or you know you see that whip he's holding that's what it'll beat you with or you know it's it's all about the i bet it does because I I, i mean i remember like um younger growing up in like south Ockington, and like we used to like go to Gray's, mum would take us to Gray's and um, to the various different markets yeah. and stuff like this. And, you know, me and my sister being young, misbehaving and whatnot. And I remember we was terrified of it. And mum said, if you're not good, you see that over there, it's called the blue shop. And it was just a, a shop with a blue front. Right. And said, I'm going to leave you in there. And that's where you, that's where you leave the naughty children. <laughs> and they put you on a shelf, and someone comes along and buys you. But they don't sell to nice people. Fuck it up. That's elaborate. Just get the yeah. shit out of us. But it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. that'd keep you and in it check. Stayed yeah. with us for years. Like, do, yeah. do, like if we were misbehaving, Mum would go, "I'm going to take you to the blue shop in a minute." <laughs> go, oh, no, Mum! Don't, don't, don't. No, 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 no. Like, so, I like yeah, that. A bit of threat does actually yeah. work. You might not be able to give them a clout anymore, but you can no, certainly you can threaten scare, their you, lives. Yeah. <laughs> you can scare the life out of them, yeah. Yeah, they say, yeah, there's bees in there as well. Bees in jars, they let them out every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> but right. it kept us in check. Yeah, I bet. So maybe maybe we need to have a resurgence of, of, of Krampus. Krampus. Yeah. I fancy that, mate. We'll put our heads we'll... together and uh, I'm the writer, you're the, <laughs> the illustrator. We'll, we'll come up with something, a, a UK... Uh... I'll, I'll make us uh, two Krampus... Costumes, <laughs> yeah. And we'll we'll, we'll uh, wander down <laughs> South End we'll, Seafront, we'll wander down the seafront, and just yeah, <laughs> try to snatch children. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, I can see that going well. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> That'll be a short-lived uh, venture, I imagine. <laughs> but even worse if we do it with German accents as well. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. I think you'd almost have to, wouldn't you? I think yeah. You'd almost have to. Um, but yeah, so in terms of the, the Krampus itself, that's that's kind of more or less what I found in you know in terms of any kind of real, I say origin. There, there isn't there isn't really one um, in terms of like you know this person created it on this day or this is when it was first used. Mm. We kind of roughly know that it was around the 15th century that it started to well, appear on greetings cards and stuff in yeah yeah. So that's that's kind of where you would see region. you would see like its uh, first literations. Yes, um, but obviously everything was spoken about and it was all like spoken pre- word wasn't it yeah christian era so mm. in those sort of times i mean the christianity probably would have hit what we now know as germany yeah probably about a thousand years ago probably mm. in the 900s mm. um so yeah so the way in order to find the actual origins of krampus we need to go back so much further Way than that back, yeah. could potentially been thousands of years old yeah 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's certainly the inspiration is thousands of, of years old. I mean, well, getting your kids to behave. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's pretty much <laughs> yeah. as they first yeah. popped out. Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, behave yourselves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, but what I did find, um, you know, was a couple of, um, I mean, only only really three that I thought was worth, you know, kind of mentioning. Mm. I know you sort of found a, uh, you know, yeah, a couple as few, well. Yeah. But basically, just there's one from Iceland. Kind That's of fucking hilarious. Di- yeah, maybe you. <laughs> you <laughs> you get to that, that though. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but it's basically different kind of sort of slightly different versions of Krampus with the same intention, you know, of, of mm. kind of, you know scaring you know sort of kids or to have that kind of evil against the you know what is believed to be the good of of santa so mm. um we'll go through sort of a couple of those but did you want to start off with yours or? yeah yeah. yeah man yeah i'll yeah. start off with um i'll start off start with iceland off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the greeler the greeler yes the greeler now this yeah. is um this is quite an interesting one and um it, it seems like again it's the first um, accounts of the Grilla appear in the 13th century for the, in the Prose Edda. Yes. Um, so again, very Scandinavian. We, we seem to be sticking with these Scandinavian yeah. sort of things. Um, and uh, it wasn't until the, the 17th century that it was actually like the Grilla, she was actually um, became part of the Christmas festival. So prior to that, it was always just like she came out of winter. Yeah. And obviously winter solstice being like yeah. the, the 20, 21st of December, mm. being so close to the birthday of JC mm. and such, then it just eventually just became part of the yeah. Christmas um, idea, I yeah. guess, really. Yeah, yeah. So the story of Grilla says that she is a hideous horned giantess with large bulbous eyes, cloven hooves, and abnormally long arms. Okay. Um she lives in the Icelandic mountains, wandering, um, and what she does is she'll wander about, and as soon as a storm hits, mm. particularly strong storm, she's supposed to wander within the storm. So it's almost like a, a, a cloud cover sort of thing. Right, okay. So they would say, you know, don't go out in the storm or the griller's going to get you. Um, so she moves silently through the razor-sharp icy winds with a constant hunger for the flesh of children. Okay. Behave yourself. Yeah, quite specific. Yeah. Behave yourself. <laughs> yeah. is going to cut. <laughs> is that the greeler? <laughs> you can imagine. Yeah, it? You're kind of, yeah. So if a child was naughty, then um, they would be left outside. <laughs> They'd wow. be left outside. Wow. With okay. the risk of coming in contact with the greeler. Yeah. Or catching hypothermia. <laughs> yeah, or catching hypothermia. Um, so it was either she would they, the, the child would be taken by the greeler right or she would be spotted by one of the greeler's 13 children now this is i'm not going to say the scandinavian names i'm not going to say please the icelandic do, names please do. oh no mate i didn't take note of them because i just looked at it and i was like nope that's not happening but i will tell you their english translations okay so the, the, and they, basically they would, they would come out at certain times um, and they'd come out one day after the next. So for the right. 13 days in the run up to Christmas, so not yeah. the 12 days, but the 13 yeah, okay. days Interesting. up to Christmas, and they would remain around for 13 days after they first appear. Um, so the first one is Sheep Coat Clod, right? and he harasses sheep, but is impaired by his stiff peg legs. Okay. Yeah. yeah so Makes he can't sense. chase them particularly fast, but he's going to harass them. He's going to give it a go. Yeah. There's Gully Gork. Right. Um, hides in gullies, waiting for an opportunity to sneak into the cow shed and steal milk. <laughs> right. It's, again, very specific. Very specific you know, names, they, They've got yeah. their penchants, yeah. by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah. um, we've got Stubby. Right. Abnormally short and steals pans to eat the crust left on them. Right, okay. So, yeah, that's an odd one. Spoon licker. <laughs> right. He steals and licks wooden spoons. <laughs> um, and he's very, very thin through malnourishment. I'm sure it's a school with a spoon liquor. <laughs> <laughs> or was that window liquor? I don't know. Uh, uh, no, I do remember a spoon liquor at my school. That, that, that was a definite. And a glue sniffer. Yeah, and a glue sniffer. <laughs> I'm sure we all had them at our yeah. schools. Uh, yeah. There's another one down here I definitely went to school with. Go on. Um, but I'll get to him. All right, go on. So the next one is uh, Pot Scraper. 
Right. And steals leftovers. Pot scraper. Pot scraper. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he steals the uh, leftovers from pots. So right. if you don't, yeah. if you don't eat all yeah. of it, you know, yeah. pot scraper's going to come here. Yeah. Um, there's also bowl liquor. <laughs> right. It hides under beds, <laughs> right? For someone to put down their their askur, uh, which was a type of bowl right. um, that that they have in Iceland, um, and then he steals it. Okay, yeah. presumably to lick it. Yeah, that would be my guess. Yeah. Um, there's door slammer. I've got one of those in the house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It likes to slam doors, especially during the night, to wake people up. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, definitely got definitely one, one of them. them yeah. Um, there's skier gobbler. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, has a, a great affinity for, affinity for skier, which is a type of yogurt. Yogurt, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's like yeah. a yogurt sort of thing. Um, there's sausage swiper. <laughs> All behave. All behave. <laughs> Hello. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> he hides in the rafters and snatches sausages that are being smoked. Smoked. <clears throat> mm, okay. Let's take a turn. You smoke, <laughs> <Yeah>. my dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's window peeper <laughs> <laughs> this is getting worse oh, yeah, it's okay. brilliant um, a sneak who looks through windows in search of things to steal including <laughs> children right okay including yeah. the children um, this is the one that I also went to school with um, I won't mention his name but <laughs> doorway sniffer <laughs> <laughs> as an abnormally large nose an acute sense of smell which he uses to locate leaf bread it's so oddly specific and children and children and children <laughs> Christ almighty right okay yep. it seems like these were specifically created because a kid kept doing something and they thought right I'm going to create a bloody monster to stop you doing it so we've now got a doorway sniffer stop, stop, stop sniffing doorways, doorways dirty stop farting kid. doorways <laughs> door sniffer's going to come get you <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, we've God. got meat yeah. hook yeah okay. um, who just it just uses a hook to steal meat yeah okay. um, and then there's candle stealer uh, so follows children and that's the last one to appear so that's the one that actually appears on the 24th of December right um, is uh, that the one that's because I, I read somewhere that it, it's believed that Santa is one of the 13 children of, of Griller so he's, he's yeah, is I that, did read that, that as well. Is that the one that's, that well, they believe is kind of what I believe Santa so, is. because this is... Um, so what the, what the candle stealer does is he follows children. <laughs> Again. <laughs> this has gone dark quick. This is yeah, really yeah. dark. Sorry, guys, but this is just... The, just <laughs> it was meant to be a Christmas episode. This is episode. just my notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he steals their candles, um, right. which were once made of tallow, uh, which was edible. Right. Um, I don't think it could be particularly nice to eat but times are tough not. in Iceland yeah, so guess, you yeah. eat what you can mm. um, but yeah there was Gorilla also has a husband a third husband which wow okay. didn't know anything about the other two there's nothing about the other two just the third one just specifically the, the third one and it's right. uh, and now I will pronounce his name go on it's Lee Baluthi okay Lee Baluthi so I don't know what that translates to but there's it's actually two... Baluthi but he had a lisp <laughs> Baluthi <laughs> Baluthi Baluthi <laughs> <laughs> was that the one that was in uh, Blues Brothers? That's the one. Yeah. Blues Brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, they're said to um, live in the cave uh, caves of the Dimu Borgia lava fields. Not the black the metal, metal band. band. <laughs> yeah, not the say, black yeah. metal band, but the, the, <laughs> apparently there is uh, lava fields known as Dimu Borgia. Right, okay. We also know where the name just, comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah I absolutely. I didn't know that. Um, and they, they have a pet. Of course. They have yeah. a pet, and that is the Yule Cat, the big black oh, Yule yeah. Cat. <laughs> yeah, read about that. Now, the thing is with um, Lee Baluthi, he, he's very lazy and stays at home, sits in the cave whilst uh, Grilla and her 13 kids go out on the hunt. It sounds like you have the right idea yeah. to me. Yeah. And, you know, um, you know, by extension, he's very rarely mentioned. So because no one ever sees him, I no suppose. one ever sees him. Yeah. But we we also don't. We've never seen the other two husbands. No, so we don't know what happened to no. them. No, but because I think I read as well <laughs> with her kids, aren't, aren't they affectionately known as the Yule lads? The Yule lads, yeah, <laughs> the Yule lads, which just sounds like a, a sort of a shit boy band, isn't it? Really, <laughs> <laughs> fronted by Keith Richards. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, 
Yeah, when I saw that, because when you mentioned Grilla, I thought, oh, I wasn't too sure if I'd, if I'd read on that. But then I went back through my notes and I saw that I'd, I'd, I'd sort of underlined and highlighted you know your be- lads. And I thought, no, I have read that. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I think of like all the, the, the old school British films. Like, I think of like Scum or something like that. <laughs> like, Where are you, lad, you now? Lockstock or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's you, I'm the daddy now. <laughs> like, oh, but so are the your lads. <laughs> your lads are on their way. Don't mess with the your lads. <laughs> but that's what I love about it as well. Is that what's really interesting about all the depictions of yeah. the your lads is they are all gnomes. Yeah, I basically like stumpy little they got, gnomes, they got aren't their, they? Yeah. little Santa hats on, you know, literally like what we're wearing right now. Yeah. Um, and but they're you know, they're kind of like the the idea of like the Christmas elves almost, but they're yeah. they're a bit disfigured. Kind of like disfigured uh, like seven dwarfs almost. Yeah, but thirteen of them sort of thing like just really like yeah disfigured and well, short and stumpy. And, and, he's a bit. He's got that yeah, huge yeah. cough going on. <laughs> yeah, massive booty. Yeah, <laughs> which I think that says a. Uh, that's I reckon a, window window people's got a flat face. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 right up against that glass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. So they're, they're, the 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 cat as well is not yeah. you know your typical pussy cat or anything like no. that. It's a giant cat that yeah. is again said to roam the the wilderness um, in the hunt of um, very again very very specific things. Um, said to roam the 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 land, searching for people who were not wearing their new clothes that they'd received for the winter solstice. That's definitely to take that's just the, control of ungrateful I reckon, kids. I reckon grandmas came up with that. <laughs> yeah. The, she you knitted all, some horrendous yeah. jumper and... Uh, You're not wearing yeah. that. The old cat's going to get you. The old cat will get you. <laughs> <laughs> I know my name would have come up with yeah. something like that. You'll say, I think yeah. mine would as well. Yeah, she, she likes the guilt trip. <laughs> yeah, so I imagine yeah. that would have, that would have so, come out, yeah. So, again, with the old cat, is, um, it's like ancient tradi- traditions of telling it around the hearth and, and yeah. such. There are written accounts of the old cat... Um, being located as recently as the, the 19th century. Um, the threat of being eaten by the yule cat was used by farmers as an incentive for their workers to finish processing all the wool from the autumn. Oh, okay. So again, farmers, the people in power, were telling naughty stories just to get people to do what they wanted, what they wanted from them. Yeah. Um, so the ones that took part in the work would be rewarded with new clothes. But yeah. those that did not would get nothing and thus be preyed upon by this yule cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't just children, it was adults as well. Um and so kid, the kids in, in Iceland just never would have gone out if there was if it was overcast, dark, raining, windy. Oh yeah. <laughs> you yeah, just absolutely. wouldn't leave the house. Yeah, no, the and if you did the, the Yule lads are out. So if you didn't if you didn't leave the house, then you had the joy of the Yule lads turning up and <laughs> sniffing your door frames or peeping I've just through got the this window. Mental or... image of like quadrophena that they're all on <laughs> all the Yule lads. All on like Vespers or yeah, all like Vespers. <laughs> Skidoos or something yeah. probably. Yeah, with foxtails on their aerials and loads <laughs> yeah. of mirrors. The 16 wing mirrors and yeah, yeah, <laughs> parker jackets and skinny <laughs> jeans. <laughs> oh, watch out, look. it's the old lads, <laughs> Iceland calling. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, I like it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I also found a, another one, so that was that was pretty much Iceland and their things, but yeah, again, it's, it's all very, very Germanic in, in the was, yeah, in that's this. What sort of found for the most part, yeah. And I found another one that comes from Bavaria and Austria and or originated okay. in Bavaria and Austria, now um, Germany and Austria. And it was uh, Frau Pöster. Oh, yeah, I read, yeah, I read that one. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one as it's well. It's a good one, yeah. So uh, Pöster was said to roam the countryside at midwinter and enter the homes during the 12 days between Christmas and New Year. Right. Um, so she would know whether the children of the young servants in the household had been well behaved and if they'd worked hard all year right um if they had they might find a small silver coin the next day um in a shoe or in a Mm. pail um if they hadn't then they'd she'd slit their bellies open (laughs) remove their guts and the stomach and stuff it (laughs) with uh straw and pebbles (laughs) why Bit brutal. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, she was particularly concerned to see that girls had spun the whole of their allotted portion of flax or mm. wool um, during the year. Uh, she would also slit the bellies open and stuff them with straw if they ate something on the night of her feast. 
day. So they'd have right. people would have a feast, um, a a feast for Frau uh, Pershta, um, and if they had eaten anything other than the traditional meal of fish and gruel. Right. Then she'd slit them open. <laughs> Bloody hell. She didn't stand a chance, really, did you? <laughs> just go love... to a hole somewhere for the day. Do you know and... what it sounds like? It's like? It sounds like playing a game with your kid that just keeps on making up the rules. Yeah. That you lose. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Like, oh, you can't do that. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. then you're dead. Like, my, well... my, my oldest would do that. I didn't think that there were so many ways you could cheat at snap. <laughs> but my God, she's found them. <laughs> so, no, you're moving too fast. <laughs> yeah. You've got to be slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, and in that, some descriptions, uh, Pershta has, um, well, Frau Pershta, she's not, because she's, she's married, she's not Frau Lein. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So she is married. Um, she has two forms. She may appear as either a beautiful and white as snow, um, like a young maiden, or an elderly, haggard old crone. So again, this is something that we right. hear about a lot with other it kind of sounds like, tales. Is it and, snow white? Yeah, is it the witch that takes the like the sort of beautiful form, but then when she wants to be horrible, she takes the form of the witch? Yeah, it's one of the Disney ones, isn't it? I can't um, think which. Uh, there was, I think, it's Beauty and the Beast, where she she oh, goes which to she curses the curses the castle the and the beast and, and all yeah, that. Okay, she appears as like the crone looking. And it's very very similar to that. So, um, this is the description Go of uh, Frau Perchta. So, in many old descriptions, she had one large foot, sometimes called a goose foot or a swan foot. Right, okay. Um, the, the the brothers Grimm, who, mm. you know, uh, compiled all these stories and such, they thought that it was the strange foot actually symbolised her being a higher being and that she could shapeshift into animal forms. Right, okay. As well, so either a goose or a swan mm. in, in this particular case. So, again, Grimm, he also noticed that uh, Bertha, which was another name that they would use affectionately mm. for Frau Pershta. Um, you definitely went to school with a Bertha. That's for I, sure. I for, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of Berthas about, that's for sure. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's apparently, what they call they call it the Swan Maiden's Foot, right. um, which was a mark of her being a higher being um, and nature being as well. Right, okay. Mm. Interesting. And at the same time, it was... Um, the the spinning woman's splay foot that she would work on the uh, treadle, I think they call it. Okay. The treadle. Treadle. Is that treadle? Treadle. I, I can't no remember. I, I can't remember. I don't know. The spinning <laughs> thing that's uh, to, to spin wool and everything spindle. else like that. That's the it. Spindle. Thank you. That they actually used to make the. Yeah. So that spin it was, it was the, it was that the kind of foot thing. that should rock back and forward. So being oh, a massive right, okay. fucking so foot, big, she yeah, could spin. Coming Andy, yeah. She <laughs> yeah. could spin till the cows came home. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it, she also, as she appeared as the old woman, she'd have a wrinkly face, bright, lively eyes, and a long hooked nose. Her hair was always dishevelled and the gar garments were always tattered and torn. Right, okay. But she didn't work alone. She had a posse. <laughs> right, okay. An entourage, maybe. And uh, it was a Pershten. So it was the plural of Pershta. Right, okay. And... Uh, this has become the name of her entourage, as well as the name of the animal masks worn in parades and festivals in the mountainous regions of Austria. In the 16th century, Pershton took two forms. Okay. Some were beautiful and bright, known as beautiful Pershta. <laughs> I'm not going to say okay. it. Right, not, okay. I, I know I promised everyone that I'd be doing uh, some, some We're accents. We're dodgy accents. No, yeah. no, I can't be doing that <laughs> yeah, today, okay. mate. No, okay. no, I feel a bit too rough for that. <laughs> um, and these come during the, the 12 nights um, and the festivals to bring luck and wealth to the people. Right, okay. The other form is the ugly Pershton, <laughs> who have fangs, tusks, horse tails, and are used to drive out the demons and ghosts. So men would men would dress up as the ugly Pershton during the 16th century and went from house to house driving out bad spirits. Um, sometimes, um, oh no! So what they would also do as well in Italy, they also had this the same sort of tradition. Yeah, and it was called uh, La Befana. Okay, um, and she was said to visit all the children in Italy on the night before. Uh, the 6th of January, to fill their socks with candy if they'd okay. been well-behaved or lumps of coal if they had yeah, not. Yeah, actually, yeah, I wrote that one down. Yeah, she, she was, um, 
yeah, it's in Italy, Russia, and other parts of Eastern Europe. So the region where mm. you are, um, yeah, it was. She's a, a believed to be a witch, um, uh, or a late, yeah, a lady deeply linked to witch figures at least around the Christmas season. Um, she doles out punishment to the lazy um, and riches to the hardworking. Um, in Italy, she's known as La La Bafona, mm. or in Russian, Babushka. Ah, oh, Babushka. Babushka. Yeah. yeah, I thought I recognised that when I read it. Yeah, yeah. Um, she kind of uh, Babushka kind of translates to almost like grandmother, right? Something okay. like that. I, I, that's, I that's guess a yeah, sort of... old. I guess yeah, which would fit into kind of what most mm. witches are depicted at. I guess. Um, yeah, she'd set off on her broomstick and go searching for children. Um, if she if she found one, she would leave. Uh, she would leave them uh, cookies and. Uh, other sort of gifts, like candies and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah, so it was, yeah, La Bofona in uh, in Italy or Babushka in uh, in Russia. Cool. Yeah, I thought that was one I uh, mm. found as well. Actually, so that's yeah, kind of, quite that cool. might be where the origin of the whole leaving a lump of coal, yes, might have cut, yeah, like came yeah, from. Yeah. Because again, it's just like all these stories seem to culminate together and yeah. create the legend that that we know that we kind of know now. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah, someone's also sort of taken. Um, I say someone, Christianity. Christianity <laughs> has, yep. t- has taken bits of Old all of these kind of little stories and kind of chucked them all in one pot, mm. and uh, and that's kind of w- why or how we've got the Christmas that that kind of we all know, you know, now and the various, various things that kind of branch off of it, um, which uh, yeah, which is which is interesting. Um, but yeah, no, I, I found that one as well. I thought it was quite interesting because it, it covered similar regions that we've already gone over. Mm. Um, but yeah, also just quite like the idea of the the witch element. Um, yeah, and leaving like just like the coal or um, or the like candy cookies or, the nice, or candy, nice yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, but you yeah, know, I quite like that. Um, is that have you got? Is that your? No, I did find one a bit more closer to home. Um, oh, nice, Mary Louise. <laughs> Ah, oh, okay. Um, now this seems to be. Uh, it seems like Mary Lewis has kind of turned into a cryptid sort of thing because right, of okay. um, what the people would do. So uh, this is again. It seems like it's another one of those creepy pasta sort of things where uh, okay. there was a tradition. Yeah. Um, but then people have like drawn pictures of it, and then yeah. people have like, just naturally assumed that mm. it's like a like a cryptid sort of thing. Right. So Mary Lewis itself actually, it seems like it comes from Wales. Basically, mm. so it's um, it's very much part of these isles, and it's um, it's sort of like a festival. Okay. And this might be where we get the idea of carol singing as well. Okay, which I'll go into. So, yeah. um, the Mary Lewis sort of translates to Holy Mary. Oh, uh-huh, okay. But it's a bit of a weird one, right? Because, go on. <laughs> so, if you think of like the the image. Of the Holy Mary, like you know, Virgin with, Mary, with, with the, the yeah. you know the, the the robe over her head and mm. all nice and everything else like this. So instead of the face of the beautiful face of the Mother Mary, um, there's a horse skull. Okay, I like where this is yep. going. Yeah. Decorated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the horse skull was decorated with ribbons and it's fixed to a pole. Um, to the back of the skull is attached a white sheet which drapes over the head and drapes over the person carrying the pole. Right. I don't know why. It's a very, very odd one. And the Mary Louis party is um, consisted of four to seven men who often um, had like coloured ribbons and rosettes attached to their clothes mm. and sometimes wore broad sashes around the waist. Okay. Now, there was usually a smartly dressed like leader mm-hmm. who carried the staff and well was underneath the, the costume. Um, and... Uh, he had the, the 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 staff stick or a whip, as well, which I thought was quite weird. Yeah, um, and sometimes over the, the stock characters, um, the merry men would play music, and this was also came from. So Punch and Judy also came from this tradition as well. Uh huh. Okay. Um, they they would all f- often dress up like the characters from Punch and Judy, but you right, know, not the police officer or the crocodile, but. Yeah. The, the actual yeah. characters themselves. Um, and what they would do is they would actually go from house to house and they would knock on the door and they would try to gain entry to the house through the, through the medium of song. Oh, God. So right. they would sing. Um, and the house, the, the people who lived in the house would actually deny them entry as part of... Tradition. The tradition. Yeah. And they would have to 
do that through song as well. <laughs> Please fuck off. <laughs> fuck Leave off. me alone. No. <laughs> <laughs> Time for you to piss off. <laughs> but you had to play, you had to sing to the tune that the, the <laughs> merry men were playing. Right. Okay. Um, and the two sides would battle it out. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and if the, the people in the house eventually relented, then the team... <laughs> The Mary Lewis team would come in and eat all your food and drink all your drink and then fuck off to the next house. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a, a merry man. I think we should start that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if this would take uh, take place um, at dusk between uh, the dates of uh, it's only for one night and it was between the the, the dates of Christmas and New Year's. It, but mm. it was almost like it was no set date right okay. it was just like as the towns would as they turned up it was oh here we go oh here right. we go Mary Lewis about yeah right. I, I quite like that yeah yeah get me uh, get me song ready yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. rock lyrics off. yeah <laughs> oh you time to piss off <laughs> but imagine if you came up against Tom Jones or something like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> you'd be done oh, alright Tom I'm going alright all right, right, okay. well the next all day right. alright yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly but yeah that's um, that's pretty much where my my I research like took me it's quite a good yeah I, I like the mix of yeah the sort of funny and the obscure <laughs> really, weird, well, and the it? dark yeah. as well I like that I, what I liked about it was that Mary the Wid could mean the Mother Mary or the Holy Mary yeah but they depicted it in the complete opposite to what it <laughs> <A> horse's <laughs> what, skull. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. very I, odd. I like it. I like, it's like the uh, the imagination that's uh, that's gone into that. I can appreciate it. At, at least over there, they weren't just maining and singing. Exactly. Were they? <laughs> exactly. Nothing else to do, did they? So yeah, <laughs> well, I like that. that was, um, I've that was got good. an idea. Put a horse head on a pole. Let's go knock in the doors, <laughs> trying to eat their food. Yeah, <laughs> trying to drink their drink and eat their food. And they had to piss off singing because they do love a bit of singing. Don't yeah, they? exactly right. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, no, I like that. I've actually I've only got two in addition to kind of add to that um, because obviously I also had written down the the Babushka and Le Buffona one. Um, mm. This one might actually be um, quite recognisable more recently, actually, to basically anyone who has Netflix and likes Christmas films because this character's actually cropped up. Um, okay. Um, in a film with uh, Kurt Russell, who plays uh, Santa, the, the Christmas Chronicles. Oh no! In the second, yeah, I know in, the one you're yeah, talking in the about, second but... one, this character is basically like the big bad of of that film. And it was oh, only okay. when I read it, I thought, well, so that's where it's come from. So again, pop culture reference gotcha. actually led us back to, you know, kind of an, a genuine uh, sort of origin. Um, so this uh, this character or, or cryptid is uh, known as Bell's Nickel. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and he's depicted as a. a Basically, a, a sort of a crotchety old man uh, who was fur clad um, and was known as a gift bringer. Um, and this, as, as you can probably imagine, again, is, is uh, it stems from German folklore, mm. um, specifically Western Germany. Um, Bell's nickel um, is believed to mean fur clad figure. So, hopefully, that's right. A bit of etymology again. Um, he he is also believed to be a um, companion of uh, Santa, um, but in the Netflix film, if I remember rightly, he's actually mm. shown as being like the head elf, okay. like Santa's favourite elf, basically. And then he gets fed up of not getting any of the limelight and turns bad, and then that's where it, the kind of the film sort of kicks like off. Like Lucifer to me, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, so. But yeah, but, uh, but different to some of the other characters that we've gone over that um, does accompany old Saint Nick, Bill's Nickel uh, doesn't, and he would actually um, do visits alone mm. um, to, to kids and whatever. Um, like I say, described as a man wearing furs and sometimes a mask with a long tongue, he's typically very ragged and dishevelled. Uh, he wore, wears torn and tattered clothes and... Uh, and carries a um, a switch in his hand um, to beat naughty children, um, and similarly he'll carry um, sort of candies, nuts, and cake for all the the good kids. So again, a, a slightly 
different like take variation on, on Krampus, basically, because yeah. he beat the bad children, <laughs> and give yeah. sweets and candies to the, the good kids. The only, I suppose the only difference is that he won't accompany Santa. He'll go out alone, whereas Krampus is believed to accompany gotcha. Santa on the same nights and stuff. Um I thought that one was um, quite interesting. It was mostly because I recognised the name, and it was only when I looked through it that it came up, excuse me, with the, the pop culture references. Yeah. And it had that film, and I thought, oh, so that's where I recognise it from. Gotcha. Um, so I thought others might, you know, sort of recognise it as well. Um, now, the next one um, is slightly closer to our, our shores, but not quite. Um, Hans Trap um, is another sort of anti-Santa um, who will hand out punishment to naughty kids. Um, this story originates from basically northeast France um, and, and Trap was actually a real man. He was rich, uh, greedy and evil uh, according to sort of to legend uh, uh, anyway. Um, he worshipped Satan and was ex- <laughs> and was excommunicated from the Catholic Church. Um, he was exiled into the forest where he began preying on children um, Easy prey. Tr- exactly, yeah. Uh, Trap would be described as being um, disguised as a scarecrow uh, with loose straw sticking out of his clothing or from his clothing. Um, and the, one, the story kind of goes that he, he was about to eat one uh, young boy that he had captured when he was struck by lightning and killed by his own god, presumably Satan. Um, and to this day, uh, Hans Trap still visits young children uh, just before Christmas, uh, dressed as a scarecrow to scare them. Wow, that's dark. <laughs> yeah, I know. Not, right? not just naughty children, just just children, just kids now. Yeah, just any kids. If you can scare them, then you'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Yeah, I, God, I, I quite the... like. I just like the darkness of that. I just kind of. That, yeah, that he was a real guy. He was maybe just a bit of a loner. Didn't, so, really, didn't really like kids. He was rich and, you know, selfish. Dresses up as a scarecrow. Yeah, and because he believed maybe in the dark arts or the Satan, he got excommunicated from the, the church, banished to the woods, and then they made up this story about him that he, <laughs> that he started snatching kids and dressing up as a scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Jeepers Creepers, doesn't it? it yeah, it does, it does. Yeah, to an extent. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I thought that was... Um, and now he uh, he haunts children dressed just, as a scarecrow. Yeah. Good grief. Yeah. <laughs> kids have got no chance, have they? Oh, they've got no, yeah, no chance. There's, there's no, uh, no wonder, really, why so many people are kind of, you know, starting to change their well, minds this, on this Christmas is, when you start reading shit like this. This is the sort dark of think, side of Christmas. The dark side of Christmas, yeah. yeah. If you was expecting, you know, sort of Disney and... All that gubbins, then uh, oh, yeah, too late no for way. that. I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we, I think we will end up doing an episode on Disney on how they've twisted all these various different yeah, tales. I think, yeah, I think we'll yeah we'll probably cover the the, the sort of the Brothers Grimm and yeah, uh, my, you know, Hans Christian Andersen and a few yes. of those guys, and actually cover the original uh, you know stories because they they are dark, proper really, dark. Like the Little Mermaid, especially. Yeah, from what I remember when we done the mermaid research and that came up, and from what I remember reading. Like that is especially dark in terms of like mm. how she achieves certain things and why she does them and that kind of thing. Like it's not the all singing, all dancing, lovey dovey, you know, Disney. Uh, no, it's so much darker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it is, and I will. Uh, yeah, I'll look forward to to that one. Um, but uh, unless you've got anything to sort of add to any of those, I was going to no. jump into the uh, educational oh, bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> sit down, kids. Um, Time for a story. Time for a story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> story time. <laughs> um, so it was time for a story. Yeah. <laughs> like, like this hasn't fucking scared, scared you them enough. Scared yeah. you enough. Yeah, now for a bit of um, education. <laughs> or education, as we know it. As we like to say. It's in good English, yeah. Um, so Santa Claus, Saint Nick, or Chris Kringle, uh, as, we, uh, as we know him, has a long history going back hundreds of years, maybe even thousands, in fact. Um, of course, most of his uh, history is steeped in Christmas traditions and what we kind of know now as mm. Santa Claus. Um, for the most part, he uh, was known as... Um, or Sorry, for the most part, he is known as the jolly guy, you know, in a red costume who brings toys on Christmas Eve. However, his story, um, his actual story, stretches back as far as the third century, 
this was when he um, basically first walked the earth um, as the patron saint of children. Um, because spoiler alert, Saint Nick actually existed. <laughs> It was actually yeah. a guy. I've heard about um, this, but I've never looked into it. I've always heard yeah. that Saint Nick actually did yeah, exist. He is believing, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Saint Nick was a monk born around 280 AD in Patara, near Mira, which is now modern-day Turkey. Oh, OK. Um, admired for his kindness, he became a thing of legend and obviously must have earned the title of Saint Mm. somehow through his you know through his kindness um it is believed he traveled the countryside giving away his inherited wealth um and helping the poor and the sick so i think this is where the gift giving bit may have come mm. from because he would literally go around just give people like money or if they needed something so if they were i don't know destitute and needed food he wouldn't just give them the money he would go and bring them food using gotcha. his money or if they I know needed a an animal to work the land. He would go and buy them a cow, or you know that kind of thing. So he was he was very much like see, both his parents died when he was young, so he inherited this um, fortune. Mm. Um, I don't know where that's coming from, by the way. That's not me. It's not me either. My phone's on silent. No, my... and it doesn't ding either. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that's coming from. You sure that's not you? No, my, my phone is always on silent. It that's... doesn't ding either. Yeah, my so... phone's on silent. My laptop's on silent. Yeah, so we do apologise for do the little dings. apologise for the little dings. I don't know where that's coming that's, from. That's not us or it's you. It's not you either, the ones listening. So no. your phones aren't going off. No. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's not your phone. It's, some, it's something in here. Something yeah. in here. Something in the studio. We don't, yeah. don't know what it is. There it goes again. There it goes again. I don't you know. Sh- you sure that's not you? It's definitely not my phone. I can I can promise you. Um, I don't. I, there's nothing else that would. There's nothing else that would do it. Um, might be my laptop. I don't know, but maybe uh, we'll take a little break we'll, and I'll go and check. Yeah, let's go and have, yeah, let's go and have a little check. Yeah, because I can't really tell where it's coming from. It's not. I mean, there'd be a notification pop yeah. up if it was the uh, if it was the laptop. So no, it's not that. My phone is always on silent well, yeah. because of work. So force a habit. It never. Well, yeah, mine is. As that's well. their minute. That's their Mac. Ah, it's their Mac. I think it must be theirs. Yeah. Do you reckon it's the um, Discord or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. Nothing's popping up from them on my phone, so... Yeah, so I, I, hopefully that will do it, but um, I'll actually give you the opportunity to go for a piss. Oh, well, OK, yeah. Toilet <laughs> yeah. break. Toilet break. Toilet break. <laughs> There's definitely something going on with this this place. Yeah. There's always fucking something, isn't there? Yeah. A, a noise or a bang or a <laughs> something or other. Yeah, they haven't quite got rid of the ghosty woasties. I don't think so. We're good. Yeah, good. Cool, man. Cool. Um so yeah, sorry about that. So I think um I think it's uh actually one of the other computers in the uh, studio that's uh that's maybe doing. I'm guessing it wasn't doing it. It's not been doing it since, is it? No, no, I haven't. No, so I think it might have been. Uh, yeah, one of the other computers making the things. So sorry about that. Um, yeah, I definitely think, like I was saying, saying to you just a minute ago, there's definitely something going still on. Something here, going isn't there? on because when I went downstairs, yeah, I started walking from the the sort of front door up to the stairs, and I thought Baz was downstairs. In, in the, the, the main studio. Yeah. So I walked back down the stairs to put my head around to sort of say hello. Nothing there. It's pitch black. Oh. But there was some, but something, I th- you know, when you get that feeling again of Someone's someone, there. yeah, a presence or someone looking at you. So I assumed it was, it was Baz, but he's not here. <laughs> so I don't think they've <laughs> exercised their demons, sadly. <laughs> Because something is always that. something is always going on. Gotta <laughs> exercise the demons. demons. This the house devil. is <laughs> not cleansed. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, so yeah, sorry about uh, about yeah. all that. We shall continue. Yeah, we shall. Uh, so yeah, so um, Saint Nick um, admired for his kindness. He would help um, those that needed it with his inherited 
wealth basically um helping the poor and the sick also um one of his most famous stories from what i could find um was when he saved three sisters from being sold into slavery or prostitution by their father he provided them with a dowry which is basically a sum of money which mm. would allow them uh, to get married and i think he I don't know if he gave it to all three sisters, but he gave it to the oldest one so she could get sort of married. And that basically saved the, mm. the other two from, from what I've sort of surmised. Um, his popularity then um, spread and he became the protector of children and sailors. It's randomly. Yeah, the, yeah. I don't know why, because I couldn't find anything else on it. <laughs> okay. but, but they noted it. So I was like, okay, fine, all right. go with it. The sailors as well then, I guess. Yeah, he um, he has a feast day which is celebrated on the anniversary of his of his death, which is December the 6th, also oh. known as the Feast of St. Nick. Um, pretty self-explanatory, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't think there was a think tank for that one, was there? Um, but this, no board meeting. Exactly, yeah. But if, you, if, if anyone remembers, this also coincides with the Krampus Nut, uh, which we mentioned mm. earlier, um, which is celebrated the night before, um, on the 5th, where Krampus parades the streets... Um, handing out coal and um, um, root, rootin' bundles uh, to presumably the naughty kids, which are basically just uh, twigs painted gold that that they would insist have to be hung around the house, which would be a constant reminder of Krampus. Gotcha. And that he's around and always watching and all that kind of thing. <laughs> pretty much a, like, pretty much like Elf on the Shelf now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And that little shit. That, yeah. Oh, freaky thing. Yeah. That, but I mean... I've seen, yeah. yeah, I mean, I've seen some brilliant, I've seen some funny, brilliant stuff, videos. Yeah, real... Kids freaking out because the, the elf's coming out of the box. Yeah. And it's just, I don't, I've got a, such a sick sense of humour because I was in yeah. tears of laughter watching that. Oh, some of them are brilliant. I saw one, just to digress, I saw one where a, a, a woman had, um, she, she, they had two elves. And she basically tried to show like show it as though like one had eaten the other. So she had like the head, <laughs> so she had like the head of the elf, and then she'd made a skeleton out of like chicken bones. <laughs> so she had like you know like a stick man. Yeah. She had like a stick man sort of skeleton out of like chicken bones with like obviously it still had bits of meat and sort of blood in it. And it was laying there on this table, and the other one like a napkin and holding a knife, <laughs> knife and fork. Excellent. And apparently she said it obviously didn't go down well and ended up like scaring the kid to death or whatever. But I just thought that's genius. Oh. <laughs> My goodness! Yeah. I mean, there was a, there's a brilliant one. I think it's, it's I think they've got Irish accents, and the doorbell goes, and she goes, "Check out!" Answer the door, answer the door, and you can see through the frosted glass that there's an elf. <laughs> <laughs> and the kid loses it. He goes, "Ah, there's an elf! There's an elf!" But he's really losing it, and she's just standing there well, filming him. Yeah, and he goes, "Open the door, open the door," and he opens up the door, and there's three of them, and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he's just screaming out the door at these elves and just like but then saying that after everything that we've said and we've looked at today could you is that really the worst that can happen yeah exactly yeah exactly. <laughs> is it really yeah. the worst is that really yeah no, that's that's funny i do like that um i wish i could get away with being that inventive but i know i'd just end up traumatizing my kids and it just isn't isn't worth the therapy <laughs> really is um, yeah the cost of therapy uh, many years later yeah exactly um but so, so continuing with uh with old saint nick um interestingly it was the dutch uh that took the story of um saint nick to new york in uh 1773 only a bloody dutchman only a bloody dutchman it's two things i in this world <laughs> people who are intolerant of other people's cultures and, and the, the Dutch. Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, very good, very good. Um, if it, but, by the way, if it, we're not... <laughs> yeah, we're not being, we're, like, we're not being a bit racist, racist there. Yeah. We it's are Austin just, Powers quote. It's just Austin Powers. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. For those that haven't seen it. Exactly. Just, or for those that are we're just Dutch. We're just incredibly bigoted. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, no, just uh, Austin Powers reference, fear not. <laughs> um, the, uh, the name uh, Santa Claus um, evolved from the Dutch name Sinterklaas, uh, which is... Basically Dutch for Santa Claus. Okay, <laughs> Basically. Yeah, no, I thought yeah. yeah. Um I guess they still say it to this day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um yeah, it's literally yeah, Sinterklaas. Um 
and that's where they reckon it evolved into is a sort of English or American English, and that's where they got Santa Claus from. Oh, gotcha. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until so that was seventeen seventy three that the Dutch introduced it to essentially America. Um, but it wasn't until eighteen oh four that the figure that became known as Santa Claus was linked with you know stockings filled with toys. You know, apparently fruit is hung um, mm. over a fireplace, um, and that there's the whole sort of gift giving um, sort of idea. So that was eighteen oh four, and then in I think it was around eighteen oh nine. Uh, so around five years later is when they then started the version that we now know with the, you know, the red hat, the beard, you know, the red clothing and the and jolly all that Saint stuff. Nick thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting that it took a, a number of years to sort of build mm. the, the kind of the presence and the image that we now. Well, the you know, image that we, that we now, now know as, as Santa Claus yeah. was created by Coca-Cola. Technically or, not. Oh, no, no you technically find, not. Is that a bit of a myth? That they, that's, no, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, it was around the same sort of era because Coca-Cola were mentioned when I did my uh, research as, mm. as being the ones that kind of put it out there. But it, it popped up in newspapers, I think, probably far sooner. But, um, yeah, but no, that did – I think that's partly true, I think. Gotcha. Um, which which I surprised, it surprised me, actually, because I always thought Santa was around – before that annoying Coke advert came out. <laughs> Holland is coming. coming. Holland yeah, is coming. Fuck it out. <laughs> you know, there were Muppets apparently during the week like, queuing up for like two hours just to see a fucking red truck drive past. Oh my goodness. But the funny thing was, it got cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> well, they found out at the last minute. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, it's not coming. Literally, like the eleventh hour. Yeah. People, they're all told. Oh, yeah. It's not not turning out. Yeah. Or well, it's not driving this way. It's going another way. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, it basically wasn't until eighteen twenty. Um, so, what 15, 15 or so years later, um, stores or malls. Um, as our American friends know, um, mm -hmm. first started advertising Christmas shopping, um, and seemed like Christmas deals or you know, th you know that kind of thing, stuff that's kind of fairly standard for us now. Mm. Um, uh, but by the eighteen forties, newspapers were creating separate advertisements um, to you know advertise Christmas, Christmas deals at various shops, that kind of thing, uh, and these would include images of the newly created Santa Claus. So the red suit, the gotcha. hat, the beard, the you know the big sort of jolly guy. Um, so yes, yeah, so that was around the eighteen forties. Um, so we've we've now got his name. We've got Santa Claus. We've got the fact that he puts gifts in stockings and that are hung around a fireplace. We've now got him in the you know the red suit and the hat and the the beard and whatever else. So it's mm -hmm. it's gradually kind of you know building up to kind of what we know now. Um, but it wasn't until some sort of 50 years later in the 1890s, the Salvation Army uh, basically needed money to cover the cost of giving out free Christmas meals um, to sort of, you know, the sort of the homeless and stuff. Um, so they actually began dressing up unemployed men as Santa and sending them out on the streets to collect donations. Gotcha. And that was pretty much, from what I can tell, the first... Uh, the, the the first sort of idea of someone, an actual person, dressing up as Santa and going out and going out and kind of seeing people. So now, cool. when you see him in grottoes and department stores and whatever else, that, mm. that's what's his standard now. But it was actually the, the Salvation Army who seemingly kind of got it all going. That's and, and this is in America as well, because I think I've seen him like TV shows and uh, films and stuff. You'll see a guy dressed as Santa ringing a bell. Yeah. standing next to a, a, a bucket in the middle of the street or outside an office block or, or that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. That all stems that was, from, that stemmed from the, the Salvation, Salvation Army. Army in the 1890s. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Which is, I thought was quite interesting. Yeah. Um, now, in England, around the 1830s, um, we were the first to popularise the idea of um, sending cards um, at Christmas and also caroling. Now, I found England... But you said Wales. Yeah, well, that's, so well, that's, that's where I think like the idea that of of the carol singing may have started with like yeah. the Mary Lloyd. Um, yeah, I was saying it's my research noted it as England specifically. Obviously, mm. you've mentioned Wales. Yeah, so so I reckon we could just put it down as Britain. In, yeah, I guess in, so, in the eighteen yeah. thirties, were the first to popularise the idea of yeah giving greetings cards at Christmas, and then also the idea of 
of doing the of carol singing as yeah. well. Um, so yeah, so between us and the Yanks, we pretty much created Santa Claus and the idea of Christmas mm. as we now know it, which again I wasn't really too sure about. Um, now just to go a bit, bit religious. Okay. Uh, around yeah. the whole idea of Christmas and why it's kind of celebrated and stuff. Um, Christmas hasn't always been celebrated on the 25th of December. Mm. In fact, the birth of uh, Jesus wasn't actually celebrated for at least the first three centuries. Um, it was only his resurrection, um, Chelsea's Easter, mm -hmm. and the annual uh, Maggie, which is basically the uh, journey of the three wise men. Magi. That, Magi. Magi. Uh, that was actually... Um, separate uh, celebrated because uh, they were seen as far more important uh, mm. events to celebrate as opposed to you know sort of his birth um it wasn't until the romans in 336 ad that the 25th was selected as the celebration of the birth of jesus um although some kind of historians and, and scholars have sort of are kind of suggesting that jesus was actually born in the spring months based mm. on the presence of shepherds and newly born lambs and stuff. You know, when you see the, the nativity scene yeah. and you've got, you know, shepherds and lambs and all that kind of thing. Apparently that sort of suggests well, that it was, that he was actually born well, around yeah, spring because, months as opposed to born on what we now know as Christmas absolutely. day. Absolutely. Well, it makes, uh, it makes sense because what we do know is that it seems like Jesus was a real person. Yes. Through various different um, archaeological digs and everything from mm. around the Levant. Um, yeah. They seem to have actually found Jesus's tomb. Yeah. Um, along with wife and kids as, yeah. as well and, and everything else like that. But it also makes sense that they celebrate the birth of Jesus at that time because um, Christianity in particular is um, basically sun worship. Mm -hmm. So it's the worshiping of the sun. So yeah, Jesus right. is a sun god. Yeah, that's right. Um, so before the Romans were worshiping Jesus, they were worship worshiping Mithras. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes sense that that it takes place at the the winter solstice, where the sun yes. is being reborn. Mm -hmm. So the, the the shortest day being the winter solstice is now the do the days are getting longer. So the yeah. the sun is now reviving, yeah. or it's now growing Which again. Then leads to, so it makes perfect yeah. sense yeah. that you know Jesus being a sun god. Yeah, um, that he's his birthday is celebrated at the winter solstice. Yeah, and I mean that's and and. Unless they actually find something in a tomb or you know a skeleton or or something that is kind of that is him, no one actually knows precisely when you know he was born. No, but they know or they they suggest that it was more likely to be spring months because of who, characters or animals that were depicted in like the nativity scene or the you mm. know the birth scene that kind of thing. Um, so I thought that was uh, uh, that was quite um, quite interesting actually. Um, now the word. Christmas comes from basically the same mass of Christ. Um, mm. And it was a mass or, or service where Christians would get together and celebrate all that uh, JC himself uh, did for us. Um, it was only the, it was the only celebration allowed to be carried out after sunset. So people started having it at midnight, which is now why you have midnight mass. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Which again is, and again, Midnight Mass is again a load of Christians that get together and sing songs and celebrate yeah, the big guy. The carols and, and, and the such. Yeah, and that kind of oh, thing. Okay, that's so, cool. Yeah, so that was again that was quite interesting because I've, I've learned a lot of stuff because obviously I've n not always been the biggest fan of Christmas, so I didn't really know a lot of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, tell like, me about oh, actually, it. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I found out um, some really interesting things about the the Christmas tree itself. Um, yeah, like how far? Like, so I'm gonna. Got to throw this out there to you. How far back do you think the tradition of bringing a Christmas, uh, of bringing a tree inside at the winter solstice into the house or into the domain? How far back do you think that might go? I don't know. I'm guessing it's. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be a Scandinavian tradition. But yeah, I'd say it actually I'd goes say... back to ancient Egypt. Does it really? It goes ancient back to Egypt. ancient Egypt, yeah. Wow. So um, obviously we know that the ancient Egypt, Egyptians worshipped the god Ra, yeah. which was also a sun god. Yeah. Um, sun god Ra, who had the head of a hawk, um, wore the sun as a blazing disc as his crown. Yeah. So that's also a thing. 
with yeah. JC. Mm. He's always got a halo, halo behind him. Yeah. So again, the, the the sun god. Yeah. So at the solstice, when Ra began to recover from his illness, mm. so again, the dying sun being reborn almost, the Egyptians would fill their fill their homes with green palm rushes. Okay. Um, which symbolized the triumph of life over death. Um and I always I found that really interesting. That That's really interesting. Yeah, the, the, bring, I didn't know the that. idea of bringing a tree into the into house the home, at the yeah. winter solstice mm. began with the ancient Egyptians. That's mad. The Romans also did it as well um, when they would celebrate um, Saturn, the god right. of agriculture. So they would always they would have a feast at the winter mm. solstice um, for the god of agriculture, um, and uh, again this was the idea of bringing the fruit and the green into the house and they would de- and again they would bring in evergreen plants right evergreen bushes or yeah. trees that you know that didn't waver with with the seasons um but yeah going to right, northern okay. european yeah. origins um the druids um and the priests of of the ancient celts also decorated their temples with evergreen trees as a symbol of everlasting life um and obviously we know about the vikings as well mm. they would celebrate it with evergreens um to celebrate the their sun god older mm. um who was unfortunately killed through loki's mischief yeah. um yeah, no basically yeah. his own Boulder's only um weakness was mistletoe <laughs> right okay so um loki made an arrow made out of a, a, a twig of mistletoe and uh it yeah it killed boulder no way mm. Hence, starting everything that happened in yeah. in the Norse pantheon. Right. Okay. But yeah, but that, that, that's interesting. Yeah, that it yeah. goes back as far as the ancient Egyptians. But the idea of the modern day Christmas tree. Yeah. Um. So that would have been that's hanging well fruit back. on the tree. Yeah. Um. Also mushrooms. So in right, particular, okay. the um, Amanita muscaria. Right. Which is what. Um, Whenever anyone thinks of a mushroom or a toadstool, mm. it's that red top with the white spikes, uh, yeah. white Th- spots in it. Uh, Mario. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mario gives you a one up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So they, what they would do is they they would um, actually put those on the trees as well, mm. and as the days went on, they would partake the little in, bit in of mushrooms. Amanita muscaria. Yeah. So it's just and, a tradition, people, don't and we? trip yeah. balls. So uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're absolutely off the so, so just to let you know, guys, it is perfectly well within tradition yeah. at Christmas to trip so, your balls on some mushrooms. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the red and white ones anyway. Yeah, yeah. 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 Be careful though. Please yeah. be careful. Exactly, yeah. But yeah, I, I found I that. I like that. That's really interesting, yeah. Mm. I, I, yeah, I, I never would have thought we would have gone that far that far back because, you know, suppose with it being mostly desert, I wouldn't have expected Egypt to have... Pine oh no! Trees. Egypt to it today. Did it? 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 Glitched. Yeah, I had a little glitch going on there. I'd lag. <laughs> yeah, I'd gaming lag right there. Um, yeah, Egypt today is is a desert, but five thousand years ago, um, completely different. The Sahara Desert mm. is only five thousand years old. Oh, right. So it's, it's very, very new. Apparently it goes on like a, um, a, a six or 7,000 year cycle. So right. in about another 2,000 odd years, the sand should start clearing. And, and it'll be like a grow forest or jungle or something. Yeah, like a jungle yeah. or lush jungle because they've been yeah. able to, in, in some places where they have dug through the sand, yeah. they've found like petrified forests. Oh, wow. So right. the, the, the tree stumps are left, and but they've began to petrify. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So oh, wow, yeah. I didn't know that. Egypt, when it was all kicking off, was a very, very different place to wow, what it is okay. today. That's cool. So you were bringing all the education to your asses this, <laughs> oh, yeah. this, this morning. So uh, <laughs> you are welcome. Um, I suppose just to end on one last bit, um, and this kind of ties into what I was saying about when um, when Jesus was actually born. But one theory for celebrating Christmas on the twenty fifth of December is that it's nine months is that nine months earlier, on the 25th of March, um, that's believed to be when um, Mary was first told that she'd be having a special baby. Ah, to start so, a, so now to you, start to start the start pilgrimage. So, yeah, sort so of basically, thing. yeah, 25th of March is when she got knocked up. Nine months later is Christmas Day. Makes sense. 
that's kind of they probably just worked back nine months from the 25th and made up some story but that's <laughs> yeah, why that's, well that sounds about right <laughs> give her a it? bit of credence yeah um but yeah that's, she hasn't been on Ma- Maury Povich has she <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, the DNA test you're results. not the father <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I know that's what's got to do that. Um, but yeah, so that's one that one theory, and I think that kind of just about ties into the spring months, doesn't it? March, pretty much, yeah, yeah. So that bit, so again, that kind of fits into to that belief and and you know and that theory. So yeah, you know, I quite liked that. It's sort of almost like starting to unpick, you know, looking into sort of Christmas, but actually then starting to unpick who actually. Mm. Jesus might have been. So obviously I had to stop because then I would have fallen oh, down God, yeah. one hell of a rabbit hole, <laughs> which would have taken me off on a complete tangent. Yeah, but, um, the one for another time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Maybe absolutely. next year. Maybe next year, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, but no, that, that that brings me to the end of the uh, the sort of the yeah, educational man. piece on, uh, yeah, on Christmas and Santa and, you know, even JC a little bit because they, they're all interconnecting, you know, obviously with it being the 25th and, you know, mm. his day of birth and Santa and everything else. So yeah, I, I learned quite a bit um doing doing this more so than what I um than what I imagined actually. So hopefully it's been uh, you know a bit of interest to everyone else uh, out there. Um because I certainly thought so. Um and I guess unless you've got anything else uh, to no. add, I suppose it's no, uh, I think it's a good way getting off the fence of sorts. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. Yeah, really. Yeah, because <laughs> to I, an I, extent, I don't know. I don't, yeah. Can we really do a getting off the fence on this one? Because uh, to an extent, it's, it's it's probably one of the easy ones, I guess, because you can see where it's all coming. Because from. we know that Saint Nick wasn't an actual man. You know, he was a monk. You know, a religious f- figure that was you know that was wealthy that spent his you know sort of days. You know, going around helping people and mm. you know giving out his riches or you know helping them in you know in sort of other ways, um, and then the story of you know sort of you know Christmas is you know in terms of what we know now mm. has kind of all stemmed from that. So from like thousands of years ago, it's gone through various cultures, various generations, um, uh, but it wasn't really until the 1700s, which was a, a lot later than what I thought. Yeah, uh, that you know that America were introduced to the idea of you know sort well, of Santa. The, uh, um, the 1700s is when America was really founded. So true. It's true. I suppose yeah. So it's, it's, it's later than what I thought, but obviously it's early for mm. America, who is still a relatively young country, I guess in mm. the in the scheme of things. But um, but no, it, I yeah. So I guess getting off the fence. Well, you know, the the origin of of, of Santa yeah did exist. He was, he was a guy called Nick, <laughs> yeah, who lived in Turkey. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's Nikos. <laughs> Nikos. <laughs> Nikos. It's Nikos. Nikos. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, like, but yeah, so it's, it's kind of one of those. It's like, well, we, there's no really, there's no need as such to kind of get off the fence because it's like, well, Saint Nick existed. You mm-hmm. know, they've they've found you know sort of stories and, and evidence and and you know whatever scriptures and whatever else that that he was around and what he did and you know whatever and that he created his own legend by just being a, a nice guy yeah but by all you know by all accounts and then that has obviously manifested itself uh gradually into kind of what we know now or who we know now is santa claus so mm. technically santa is real yeah <laughs> you know if, if you, you kind of work it back you know sort of far enough obviously the depiction that we know the you know the fat guy in the red modern. suit with the reindeers and whatever is is kind of Less true, so get any kids listening. <laughs> switch off now. <laughs> so yeah, switch off now. Um but uh <laughs> there's, no, ki- there's yeah. no kids listening, <laughs> there's no to, kids this. listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be very irresponsible to let yeah. your kids listen to this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um so yeah, so I guess in in that respect, I guess there's two there's two answers really. I'm off the side of the fence on you know kind of the believe side because Saint Nick did exist he was a real man as we've discussed mm. so i'm kind of off the fence and like we are kind of i believe that this guy existed but then i'd be on the other side when we talk about you know the the modern depiction of santa claus that that we now know we, yeah. we obviously know that that isn't you know necessarily true mm. um and obviously what we kicked off with the you know the krampus we know that the, the krampus was deliberately drawn up or thought of to basically combat or, or, you know, to be the other side of the coin to Santa Claus. Yeah. So with the good, you have to have evil. And that is pretty much why it was seemingly, you know, sort of created. So 
you know, I guess with this one, there's kind of there's two sides to the fence that we would kind of need to be on. Certainly, mm. certainly as I see it, anyway. You yeah, know, and- no, I, 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 yeah, I think I'd uh, I'd echo what you've said there. Really, I mean, it's it's you can't deny that Saint Nick actually did exist. Mm. Um, you can't deny the the good that he did, and really mm. the, the 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 message that is supposed to be put forward. You know, yeah. it's giving selflessly. Yeah, that's that's the whole point of of Christmas, and yeah. it seems like that that message itself is lost today oh, yeah, in, in the yeah. consumerism that we've got because we've let the corporate side of you know society kind of take over and put you know a hallmark stamp on it and create these <laughs> yeah. gift cards and you know every, everything in the month of well it used to be December but now Christmas is starting so fucking early yeah, it's like it's, the month it's getting pushed it straight the after month of the Halloween yeah yeah sort of August at the earliest I've seen, you know, shops are starting to, you know, put up decorations or displays and the radio is starting to play Christmas songs and mm. Christmas films are, you know, starting on the the telly or, you know, on the movie channels it's, or yeah, whatever. It's, so it's the, 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 the actual real it's the meaning of it. Side. The, yeah, the real, real meaning, meaning of it is, long time ago. is lost, it's really, for a lot of people. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, oh, absolutely. Which oh, is, Black Fridays and, and yeah, all that sort of exactly, stuff. It's, yeah. Black Friday, for anyone that doesn't know, the reason why it's called Black Friday is because all the retailers go from being in the red to being on the black. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's that, you know. because Their numbers, yeah. Yeah, because they just put out these silly sales yeah. and everyone goes mad for it. Yeah. That's and it. Which, and when you look, they're not actually that silly. <laughs> they, they reduce something by like a tenner, but because it's on Black Friday, you think it's a really good deal. But if you mm. wait, if you shopped the day before or, you know, the week after, you'd probably get it for the same price. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. they just the, advertise but, it on Black Friday to make it seem better than what it is. Mm. So, yeah, so it's all the, as you say, it's all the, the corporate side, yeah. um, you know, of, of modern life, really, that, that's kind of depicted Christmas as we as we know it. But, yeah, it could be could be done on a far smaller scale if it was to actually follow you know the uh you know the tradition and, and the, the trouble is you can't do anything you know selfless nowadays because everyone wants to put it on tiktok or on oh, facebook grief, they, they helped out some homeless guy or they bought someone dinner or they bought this for someone it's like, okay well, if you did it just do it yeah you don't need to put it on social media because if, if it was selfless then no one but you and that person would know mm. about it as soon as you start advertising it and putting it on social media you lose the selflessness of that act yeah. because you're now going to gain something whether it's just praise notoriety or whatever you're now going to gain something off the back of that mm. which then renders it yeah which is not like, selfless <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah it's like they, they they explored that in um an episode of friends didn't they they said there's no such thing as a selfless good deed oh yeah and like phoebe, phoebe was trying to go get yeah, no, by is, the oh, but i feel so good now <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> exactly yeah yeah it's, it's true yeah. i mean the idea of a selfless good deed is if, if it means nothing to you but it helps somebody else. helps someone else yeah. yeah then yeah great it doesn't matter if mm. it's selfless i think you're allowed like to that. feel good about it and still and have it still be selfless but mm. if you gain anything so whether that's popularity, praise, you know, notoriety, whatever it may be, mm. that's when it then becomes. I've seen a lot of that lately. So you've got on, these like youngsters who are like media. helping someone out, you know, buying the poor kid at school a you know a pair of Air Jordans or whatever. Well, but you I... you post a video on social media, so you obviously want credit mm. for it. If you just did it because you're a nice person, no one else would know about it. Yeah. But you, you obviously want some sort of reinforcement because of it. I've seen seen a lot of that recently in the past couple of years, especially with all the footage that's come out from America of mm. like the various different riots and, mm. and and stuff. And it was one that that struck me. Like <laughs> I saw it and I was just I got, I got so angry with it because it okay. was like there was a guy that was boarding up his shop, mm. and this woman came over to him and said, "Do you mind if I help?" He was like, oh, oh, okay, no worries. And so oh, he and passed the her guy, the drill. The guy full us up and... And she starts, you know, screwing in. And then the guy comes along with a camera, takes a couple of pictures, and she goes, you got that? Yeah. And he goes, yeah. So she goes, thank you. And she goes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah. so much. He gives it back like and this. then, yeah, And yeah. he turns around and fucks off. Yeah, I saw that. And yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, my God. But that's it, yeah. But it's for it's for shares and likes. And, it's for the clout, isn't it? And for, yeah, and for the, the clout on social media. That's that's all it is, all, the, all this influencer nonsense and but again, you know, all it's this that stuff. that idea of, like, true morality. And, and that is why these sort of festivals were sort of 
made the way that they are. So the origins of yeah. these of these stories and everything is is all about trying to teach people the correct morality. Now you could you could get like really arrogant about it and just mm. say, oh, it's just about control from like the religious aspect of it all. Yeah. But there's a certain amount of morality that is to be taught. And yeah, if you're just yeah. gonna, you know, teach your kids that oh, Christmas comes along, and regardless of how you've done throughout the year, you're still gonna get that PlayStation Five. Yeah, you know that doesn't. I don't teach them anything. Teaches nothing, no. And all you're gonna have is a sport brat on your hands. Yeah. So you're only making a rod for your own back, you know, with with that one. Um, but no, you should say I think you know we I think we digressed a little bit, but but in essence, no, I you know I think the you know the the true sort of meaning of it all, um, you know, has been has been lost. Um, but the true origin is there and, you know, it has been improved. so in terms of off the fence, as I say, you know, you've got to be on the, you know, kind of the, as weird as it's going to sound, you've got to be in the whole believe, mm. belief side, you know, believing in, in, in Santa because St. Nick was a real guy, as, as we've said multiple times. So mm. it's one of those where I found it actually sort of quite easy to kind of believe in that side of it, which is why I didn't want to go down the sort of the, the more history um, and, you know, sort of, uh, or even religious route because mm. that's where it, that's where a lot of the actual truth was you know was held you know sort of believe it or not everything else that we went over all the, the various like literations and iterations of, of either Krampus or Santa or whatever mm. is all is all been manufactured by us you know really for the, for the most yeah. part so um, but no I mean for me it was certainly interesting to actually read into a lot of the more historical stuff to actually see how far back it went and you know mm. that this i was this surprised nick, by the ancient egypt thing yeah definitely i was as well you know and that you know nick was a real guy and that, you know this is what you know this is what he did this is how mm. it all kind of stemmed from that and yeah i mean I, I wasn't surprised about the involvement of you know christianity and the creation of a another devil like mm. you know character to <laughs> Set off against the, the, is the good. devil. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Boucher is out again. She's back again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I thought there, so there's a few pleasant surprises, you know, because I, initially I went into it thinking, oh, we knew we, we all know what Krampus is. You know that, you know, Christmas is, you know, sort of fake or whatever. But in terms of, like I say, a lot of the historical and the actual origins, mm. um, you know, was the bit that uh, was the bit that interested me and surprised me as well to some extent. In, in some of it. Also, I had a lot of laughs, as I know you did as well, looking at some of these other alliterations of, you know, sort of Santa or the celebration of yeah. Christmas and especially the Icelandic, um, the Icelandic stuff. And yeah. The, the, the Yule Lads in particular. Yule Lads. That, I thought that was brilliant, yeah. Yeah, best watch good. out for that window, Peeper. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and as we said, I think we've all met a spoon, spoon liquor. Spoon liquor, oh, we've seen we? a door, well, I've met a Dawson if I... <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think we we all know. It's, lads, it's, it's a funny we? little funny little fact. Again, it's like a got a Germanic um, origin. But do you know what a schnurdler is? <laughs> no, no. A schnurdler <laughs> is a seat sniffer. <laughs> <laughs> so was quite, he a young lad and kicked out? Or? I reckon he got kicked out for yeah. being too weird. Yeah, for being too weird. Yeah, <laughs> sniffing too many seats. Yeah, yeah. you dirty schnurdler. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, mate, it's brilliant. Yeah, I had, good, I had good fun reading the, uh, you know, reading that stuff. Yeah, but, man. Um, but no, that's, yeah. I think that's that's pretty much it. That bring, much, yeah, that brings out. Uh, we kind of gradually came off the fence, I think, throughout the episode with the very well, obviously with laughing at a lot yeah. of the literations, but then obviously going over the you know the, sort of the historical stuff, and you know it held quite a you know quite a lot of credence for me and in that sort of thing. So it'll be interesting to kind of maybe go back over that or you know sort of JC himself and see mm. whether we can kind of maybe unravel some potential kind of threads that you know lead to kind of his actual you know, kind of existence, which I know, you know, there are far more smarter people yeah. than us actually doing it at the <laughs> moment. Actual but scholars. Actual scholars and <laughs> yeah. archaeologists and historians and whatever mm. else. But if we can put in our two cents and, you know, sort of bring it to more people than, uh, yeah. then, yeah, I think that'd be quite, um, I think that'd be quite fun to, quite fun to do actually. Yeah. Um, so I guess we're ready to ready sign to, off. to sign off and uh, say goodbye. But before we do that, Obviously, oh, we've go got on. to do another little shout out to all our Patreons and absolutely and such. Yeah. And guys, Justin come and, and James, come and Thank check you. out our uh, our socials <laughs> as well. You know, with at the Cryptid Ramblers podcast, yeah, um, uh, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitter yeah, the whole shebang, and, and Spotify and 
Apple, Google, and wherever else Absolutely. you can get your, your podcasts. We're also on there as well. And also uh, another thank you to Hellfire Studio. Yes, uh, absolutely. Housing yeah. our, our last episode of the season. Putting up with us, yeah, and, and yeah. having us uh, down. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and we want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Yeah, Happy absolutely. Yule and a, Happy Yule, yeah, and Merry a wonderful Christmas. winter solstice as well. Absolutely, yeah, whatever, in whichever way you celebrate it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. <laughs> Better watch out for that tour sniffer. Best do. <laughs> Best do. <laughs> <laughs>